Hey guys, what's going on? This is Tarab here and in this video, we're going to talk about the use cache directive. I know what you're thinking. There are a lot of directives already use client, use server, and now you add use cache to the mix. Don't worry. It's behind the experimental flag for quite some time. I think so, but I think it's a pretty important thing and I think it's pretty exciting uh, how it works. And uh, if you don't already know next JS cache is everything by default in the previous versions up till next year's 15 and in canary versions you can actually enable an dynamic io feature which makes cache opt in so nothing is cached by default unless you mention the things you want to cache so i think that's a pretty good thing the community wanted this for a very long time but what we got is a directive and i think it's pretty cool i'm not really mad about it so we are going to talk about use cache in this video so let's get started all right, so we are on the documentation for the Next.js use cache directive. So it says the use cache directive designates the component and or a function to be cached. It can be used at the top of a file to indicate that all exports in the file are cacheable or inline at the top of the function or a component to inform Next.js the return value should be cached and reused for subsequent requests. This is an experimental Next.js feature and not a native React feature like use client or use server. So if you're using React vanilla, you are probably not going to be able to use use cache unless they implement it, of course. Uh, to enable this, of course, you need to use the dynamic IO flag, which is experimental, and you need to enable it in the next.config.ts file. And this is only enable uh, this is only available in the canary versions of Next.js. And then basically you can use use cache anywhere, wherever you want to cache stuff. So as soon as you enable dynamic IO, your app will immediately convert into opt in cache instead of opt out cache. So if you are trying to use this in an application where you have a lot of different requests, make sure that you go through each and every request and manually add caching to them because it's going to immediately remove any caching to them. And, uh, it will basically just run like a normal request. Like it will be a request will be sent every single time when you load the page and a new data will be fetched every single time. So make sure that uh, you understand that this will convert your app into cache opt in instead of opt out like we used to have before. So yeah, um, let's get started with um, actually working with use cache directive. So I'm going to create a Next.js application and show you basically how does it work in the stable version of next 15 and how you can enable dynamic io in next year's 15 canary and the differences basically so yeah let's get started all right so we are in the code right now and what i have done is removed all the boilerplate and i just have a food component here and if we go to the food component i am using the fake lgs library to get some random data so whenever i call this i'm going to get some random food dish here and i'm just going to print out the name of the food which is generated by fakerjs um, so basically in traditional nextjs what would happen is this will get cached and it will be once rendered it will be shown to you every single time uh, so to verify that let's first go to package.json and i want to show you that uh, react is rc but basically next nextjs is stable uh, which is 15.0.3 and now let's go to our terminal and here I'm going to do pnpm build and pnpm start because caching doesn't really work in dev mode at least uh, in the normal mode where caching is opt out so yeah uh, let's wait for this to be finished and then we can check if it's cached or not and basically one more thing before I forget, we also have a loading dot TSX here because we need to have a suspense boundary. It's also a very good thing to have uh, whenever there's some kind of loading. And also uh, I want to also create a fake um, loading timer. So I'm going to add this here and uh, just to simulate that this is going to be a long API call. I'm going to go to my terminal again and do this build process again. Now this should not take a lot of time let's wait yeah my, my 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 laptop never misses a chance to prove me wrong 
yeah take your time all right can we do it quickly yeah perfect now let's go to localhost 3000 it says bunny chow if we reload it's still going to say that because this is cached now if we go back and uh now let's upgrade the next js version to canary and let's try again so i'm just gonna do pnpm install uh, next at canary this should upgrade our next js version in this app to canary version now let's try this again it's going to be basically the same but i just want to compare and show you how these things work basically we haven't even mentioned cache anywhere here right but still the cache is there right so you need to opt out and i'm not going to in the detail of how to opt out because we are here in this video to see how we can opt in to cash so yeah uh, let's wait for this to finished i think there should be a pretty good way to do this because like it's not really good to uh, keep building it yeah so it's again cached now let's kill this and let's go to next.config.ts and here let's add a new experiments experimental uh, we want to turn on the dynamic io flag here so now as soon as you do this and save this your next js application has officially become opt in to cache so basically you need to mention where you want to cache your stuff and it will not automatically cache anything for you so yeah now let's do pnpm dev and i'm really happy that they did this and now if you use this mode apparently you can just use pnpm dev and the cache will still work now if, if we go back and try reloading it's going to take the two second delay and i'm not sure why it's not showing the loading screen yeah now it is showing yeah whenever i reload it's showing the loading screen and it's just giving different dishes i have who it's okay i'm i'm not going into the details right now but yeah uh now what if i want to cache it very simple we can just go here and use use cache perfect and now let's go ahead reload now the first time it's going to load and now if we keep reloading reloading it's just going to show us kebab here which is yeah pretty cool um yeah uh, just doing the use cache did the job now the thing here is that we have used use cache on the component level so if we have anything else so like const description is equal to await faker dot food dot description and then we can simply mm, probably have okay div and another div we can have the description let's save this and let's load it's loading because the description was not loaded first uh, and also whenever you save the file the cache seems to be revalidated anyways so yeah now it's cached uh, just to verify i'm gonna remove this and just see what what happens yeah it's different every single time right yeah so the thing is that uh, these both are getting cash so what uh, what is the thing so like what if you want to just for whatever reason i don't know what reason you have but like for whatever reason if you just want to cash the description but not the food so what would you do you would actually pull these from a different functions right so use cache is on the component level what you could do is pull this inside a function and that function will be cached instead you can also use this in server actions by the way so yeah so what we could do here uh, basically technically you should be creating new files you know what let's let's just go ahead and create a new file here i'm gonna call it uh, db.ts <laughs> even though that does not make any sense so uh, we are gonna have const get food name export const This is going to be an asynchronous function 
and yep uh, we need to actually import faker so import faker from yeah thank you github copilot all right so now we can just do export get food description yeah perfect thank you so much um yeah i don't want to compare anyways so let's go here we, we can now remove this uh, actually we should not remove this we could just have a uh, get wait get food name and we can have uh, await get food description now we can simply go back here and uh, reload it's still cached which is yeah we need to remove this from here now it's not going to be cached anymore now what we can do is we can simply go to the food dot uh, actually in the db dot ts file and if you just want to cache the description for whatever reason you want it uh, if you deem that this description is not changed that often you can simply just cache it and now uh let's try this uh, now the kebab and a delightful tart so if we just reload the name should change but the description should remain the same now there is a way that you can actually make that the entire page is not loading just this is loading by covering this in a suspense boundary all right so i have made it start it uses suspense now so basically i have created two components food description and food name so the food name is just doing this await food name and food description is doing the same thing and the difference here is in the db.ts file where we have added the delays here which we need so that we can simulate a loading screen uh it's just that in the food description we have used cache and in the food name we haven't so if we just go back and reload this uh you will see that uh only the name gets reload so if you're doing this for the first time the entire page should be loading because it's also loading the uh, description you can also wrap that in the suspense boundary if you want to but i'm really not going to do that <laughs> so yeah basically now you can see that the description is the same and the name is just changing so yeah uh, there are a few more things that we need to know um about this so if we go to cache life and cache tag you will understand more so cache life function is used to set the cache lifetime of a function or component it should be used along the use cache directive and within the scope of the function or component so basically use uh, so sorry cache life is used to determine when you want the cache to revalidate basically so uh, if you go to the usage of course you need to enable the flag which we already did now it says cache lives ours and uh, basically that means something which i first didn't understood but if we go down here you will see a long table where you can find a lot of different things so the default if you don't provide a cache life the data will revalidate every 15 minutes but it will basically never expire so what does revalidate and expire mean so the the cache is stored on your server so what will happen every 15 minutes here is that your client browser will ping your server to see if the cache is still valid or not and uh, this cache is still hold, held by the server in this case for an infinite amount of time so if the data hasn't changed the cache will always uh, be there and uh, it will revalidate it every 15 minutes so yeah every other option if like this expire of 1 minute your cache will be deleted off the server after 1 minute so the best way to show you is the seconds option because it won't take a lot of time here of course in 15 minutes this will be revalidated and if it will of course change because this is always random and this is not never going to be the same but if for any reason this is same the cache will remain so yeah now if we just do cache life here uh, which is unstable cache life and we can uh, this is simply wrong <laughs> we can simply do seconds to test and uh, yeah let's save this let's reload the first the entire thing will reload now if we reload yeah the entire thing will reload 
because the the entire thing is being revalidated every one second right so since data is always random it's not going to be so it's basically expiring before one minute so yeah if you set it to hours however so you will see that what i'm trying to say if you set this to hours it means that it will revalidate every one hour so now yeah, this description sh should remain here for one hour at least and then it will change or then it will ping the server to check if the description has changed and in our case basically it will definitely change because it's random. So yeah, this is how cache lives works. So we can also have cache tag which is pretty simple so I'm not really going to show you how this works. Basically this is something you could use with webhooks or anything like that. Uh, this is basically on demand in validation of cache. So what you can do is like whenever you use the use cache directive, you can pass a cache tag. So basically you can have a profile data or anything like that. And if you get a webhook or if the person changes the profile in some way, you can invalidate the cache by using revalidate tag. So you can pass in revalidate tag and profile data that will basically force the revalidation and uh, the user won't see any outdated data in the profile page. Uh, you can do this. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to do this right now. You can basically pass two tags to one use cache directive. So yeah, uh, I'll, I'll have, highly recommend you to check out the documentation of Next.js canary version. You won't see the cache live cache tag and use cache directive in the regular documentation, you need to switch to the canary version and see that way. So yeah, that's it for this video. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope that this video explains you in a better way what use cache is and how you can use it. And uh, there are a lot of different confusions where, where other videos don't cover is that use cache basically makes your, uh, I think dynamic IO is a better word. In dynamic IO makes your app cache opt-in rather than opt-out which is i think pretty good and which aligns with the community feedback over the caching rules they set earlier so yeah that's it for this video if you have any suggestions or if you have any things that you want to add to this video which i didn't mention feel free to leave that in the comments below i am always up to learning something new and providing you with some valuable content so yeah Make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, whatever, all those YouTube things. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.